journey to the next mobile frontier. Um, I'm going to ensure that we will have a networking break after this panel discussion. So till then, I'm going to request all of you to please be seated. Meanwhile, can we also have the team give a quick makeover to the stage? Let's have all the chairs and all the tables on the stage as well so that we can invite the panelists. And after the next uh, networking break, we're also going to be announcing the uh, Twitter contest winner as well. So please do keep those tweets coming using hashtag ScreenAge. Once again, we'd like to also thank our presenting partner, Sony Live. We live to entertain. Associate partner, Share It. AI and big data partner, Mo Magic, Data-Driven Intelligence. Badge and Lanyard partner, TimesNowNews.com. Action begins here. And... Uh, with that, it's time for the action on the stage. It's time for our next panel discussion. Now, this particular panel discussion will be moderated by Mr. Sandeep Reddy, who is the uh, country sales head media with Akamai Technologies. And, of course, we're going to have our uh, set of uh, speakers and panelists who will join us shortly as well. But please do know that the theme, the very interesting theme that we have in store is Journey to the Next Mobile Frontier. All right, so on that, on that note, let's get the uh, session started as well. And uh, I'd like to firstly invite Mr. Sandeep Reddy, Country Sales Head Media with Akamai Technologies, to please come on the stage. And joining him, may I please invite Abhishek Joshi, CMO and Head of Business Partnerships, MX Player with Times Videos, uh, Amit Khanduja, CEO, Big Flix, Nachiket Pantvaidya, Group COO and CEO with Alt Balaji Telefilms, Rajiv Kumar Singh, Head Ad Sales and Monetization with Sony Live, Ram Krishnan Lakshman, Head of Digital Business with ABP Live. Great. So I've been told that Mr. Nachiket will not be joining the panelists, right, for, the, for this discussion as yet. So, sir, I'm going to hand over the proceedings to you then. Thank you. All comfortable? Go on. Hi, guys. Welcome. Um, so as we all know, uh, we're moving to the digital economy. Uh, globally, there are more eyeballs watching uh, content over the Internet than over traditional broadcast. So that trend is happening in India as well. And uh, I want to discuss uh, where we are in that journey and is mobile our next frontier. Uh, the first question I had was for Abhishek, and I think we were just discussing this outside. Uh, what do you think is the role of digital uh, in, uh, in the overall ecosystem? Are we competing? Is it a supplemental uh, you know, uh, source for new users? Where are we today? Hi, guys. Uh, see, to be very honest with you guys, uh, mobile screen, if you ask me honestly, it's, it's, it's incidental. Okay. Uh, the primary reason for any user to come on a screen is to be entertained. Okay, I mean that's the that's the need of the user which we are trying to fill. Either it could be cinemas or TV or mobile screen or what. Uh, yes, mobile is the next frontier, not as a either or screen, but as an and screen. And that is the biggest challenge that all of us here face as how to make this mobile screen as an and screen, which my consumers will access and consume and get engaged on even while they are in front of TV or even while they are in front of any other screen. So uh, we effectively, uh, I don't uh, strongly believe that we are fighting for screen time. We are fighting for uh, mind of, I mean, uh, 
share of mind, share of time, share of uh, engagement. That's as simple as that. Fair enough. That's a, that's a great point. Uh, you know, we've seen that as well. Uh, you know, with IPL, we saw that, um, you know, viewership on both broadcast as well as on uh, the online viewing increased on both fronts. So definitely there's room for everybody. Um, in terms of reaching uh, the diaspora, I mean, we spoke about it. What do you think is, uh, you know, how do we cater to the diaspora and how do we bring them on uh, the, the mobile ecosystem? So I think, uh, I, I think the difference, there has to be, a, and there is already a difference of how you reach uh, the users in India or what the content they want to, you know, watch versus the content with the people who want to watch outside India. Like if you're reaching out to the Indians uh, or Southeast Asians outside India, their requirements or their uh, their content habits or content viewing habits or content consumption habits are going to be very different than what is going to be for the Indian market. Uh, the reason being is there, as we were talking about the mind share, we're not only talking about the mind share on the on the screen time, but you're also mind, you also you also have a mind share of other content which is relevant to their community where they're based. So I think that's a very very important factor. Uh, also, when the con you know there's so much of different contents which we are talking about, like you were talking about the mobile gaming, that's another component. So yes, you know what you're doing right now when you are interacting with the user with the content, there are multiple pieces of content and there are different times when they will react to and they will, diff you know, and there's a different content which they will react to. Uh, you know, it's going to be hard for you to be able to watch a long form movie in a stretch on a mobile device. But do people watch it? I mean, I have a, you know, if I have a, a nine year old and an 11 year old, tell them to watch something on the television, they never want to watch it. They only want to watch it on a small screen. Because for them, that's the me mechanism. So is that the, you know, because they're watching it on a, uh, a sh you know, or, or a tablet or a phone, their viewing patterns are smaller components because they're trying to get that in the bits. But if you're going to watch a movie of three, three and a half hours, it is hard to be able to watch it in one go on the screen. So different patterns, different content, different, or different kind of content. And that brings us to an interesting point about live sports. Um, yeah. You know, cricket, uh, we spoke about prime time for digital being a different window than probably traditional television. So, you want to talk us through that? Yes. So, we were, the context was India versus Australia, yeah. which is coming up uh, from 21st November onwards. Uh, their matches starts at, either T20 starts at 2.30 in the afternoon, which is practically what we call it as a digital time band. You know, people are at our office, the consumption is male driven, hence, either, so it ends at 6.37. So, you have entire pure digital time bands to work on it. Having said that, uh, our non-cricket behavior also uh, replicates TV. So just to give you, uh, come back to you, uh, on every day, we see a traffic pattern to it. Our peaks are between 8.30 to 10.30, actually 11, when we have crime patrol. So it's consumer behavior on what people want to consume. <laughs> that also determines that. Uh, on India, Australia, yes, definitely. Uh, we believe our 90% of traffic would be during that period of time. Some of it will obviously will go to highlights and other sections and stuff, but that's there. Um, in terms of tests also, it starts at 9.30 or early morning, so which would mean uh, a digital traffic to it. Yeah, and that just goes to show, the, uh, further emphasize the point that both can coexist and the prime times are different for... It's okay, it's a lot of, there are a lot of words being used like catch-up content or content, you know, which is there. I just want, my, my, my logic is simple like this. If somebody has to watch Tarak Mehta at 8.30 on sub-TV, he will not watch Tarak Mehta at 8.30 on, on sub-TV and then come back in the morning and watch again on Sony Live. Yeah. He, either or. He, either or. So for a guy who watches a GEC content once or first time, for him it is live. Right. That, that's what he is watching. So that's my thought on that part. Thank you. And uh, RK, in the context of news, um, what do you think about the coexistence so with I think the... uh, in news it's dramatically different from uh, any other type of entertainment content that you would consume. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges for us is that news is consumed uh, not just on our platform but also on platforms beyond uh, our own uh, sites. So basically there are two approaches. Either I make consumer come to me or I go where the consumer is. And right now the consumer consumes news in various different formats. It could be on a mobile screen, it could be a vertical videos, it could be, uh, you know, on Amazon Echo. 
So what I also foresee is that with the new Amazon Echo, with the circular screen coming up, you might have a new concept of circular video videos being produced. So uh, for us, uh, coming back to your first question, it's not either or, because we've seen uh, news being, you know, being consumed consistently throughout the day. And it's not just on uh, the site that news gets broken, but it gets broken all over various platforms, whether it's Twitter or on YouTube, etc. Uh, the growth has been tremendous from all fronts. And uh, um, we see the format constantly evolving. I think mobile is the biggest thing happening in India right now. Sure, but how do we take it to the next level? Do you think personalization for news is going to be a big uh, area to work on? I think that... Uh, will be one of the biggest areas because uh, very soon you might uh, have a need for providing news to a consumer based on where he is right now. For example, what's going on around us. We've still not reached that level of content generation and creation primarily because right now there's a lot of fake news also happening. So if some news comes up saying some incident has occurred around here, as a media publisher, we cannot publish it un until we verify it. But I think from a long-term perspective, you'll see a lot of personalization happening basis where the person is located or where the person is traveling. Yeah. I think that level of personalization you will see happening. Right. And also some customization around screen layout and uh, how you push notifications. Uh, that obviously, I think, I mean, that's not the future. That's already there. It's happening. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, we, we also, Rajiv, we spoke about uh, user engagement and sure. how it's... Uh, Increasing now as a revenue officer, you're obviously very concerned and very interested in increasing engagement times. Sure. Uh, what are some of the strategies that Sony might have uh, employed to improve engagement times? Uh. Okay. So, the best part is all of it is is the second screen experience. You know, we have seen if if I have to look at an average user's time spent on us uh, during second screen while KBC, it has shot up by two times. Oh, that's a big thing engagement on a you know single device kind of platform and that i think we have tested in indian idol and currently doing in kbc it has delivered us four four x the number which we were hoping for that means anyway aggressive number became four times and we will like to do similar experience in india versus australia and that i believe is also one of the future play for any utility player to work on it i think other players are also implementing that uh, it gives a person a very interactive way of, of playing a game or engaging with the, with the product, uh, which, is, which is just not an impersonal way of, you know, if the mobile is there, can I throw it up on TV or can I use it in some other device versus actually engaging with the product. Yep, great so, point. I think that's a great avenue for extra monetization. Yes. Um, thank you. Amit, uh, do you want to talk us through, um, you know, I'm sure given that your content is movie heavy on Big Flakes, your watch times have been traditionally high. How do you get that to go up further? Have you done some work around that? I mean, that's always been a big challenge, right? Because the consumption of a movies uh, on the platforms is, you know, if you look at it, it's about, a, you know, one and a half movies to two movies is what people watch. The full movie length, if you look at it in a, in a month uh, perspective. And those numbers are very different on the global markets than they are in India. So our, what we are always trying to do is how can we target a, a genre or a content specific to a user? Because that is, it's all about customization for us. It's all about one-on-one -on -one engagement. So what you watched and what you will watch next is very important in our, in our mix. Because the more, if you are able to surface the content, let's say if you have two, two and a half thousand movies on the platform, it's very rarely somebody will go in and search the movie very rarely. But if you make the life easier for them, or if you make the life easier for them from a content where the pattern recognition or, uh, you know, the machine learning aspect comes in is that what you watched and what you'd expected to watch, if we can bridge that gap, the consumption patterns goes up quite significantly. So when we go back to three years ago when we started to add the functionality of uh, the you know, similar to what you watched or, you know, uh, you know, where we did it not only from the movie but also based on the genre, based on the actors, based on the actresses. I, we saw that consumption pick up because if you're a fan of uh, Shah Rukh Khan and, you know, we are able to surface the movies of Shah Rukh Khan right above, 
then you know your search component goes down. So I think leveraging the technology, understanding the user, and ability to be able to market on a one-on-one -on -one basis is a very important factor. And I think that technology enables us to do that now. It, it you know, and it's changing quite rapidly on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, there is so many buzzwords which are being floating around with the machine learning and AI, you know, IoT and everything. And all of that comes into the play because as a user, you want to watch what you want to watch. You have a limited amount of time. It's very rarely that you want to sit down, then you're going to say, okay, I'm going to go browse the five OTT I have and find something which I want to watch and then watch. Typically, you have something in mind what you want to watch or similar to what you have watched in the past and engage with that. Right. So that I think uh, I'd like to add uh, to your question. Um, anecdotally, if you see, especially in urban areas and metro metro cities, people spend a lot of time traveling. And if you just go about and see what people are doing, you'll see you'll find people are actually watching movies in buses and trains, long form movies, because they spend so much time traveling. And I think a lot of this content consumption is happening in an offline kind of a mode. Probably a lot of piracy. I think there is, is probably one area where, uh, I mean, if content providers can explore looking at offline consumption of content. Yeah, and that's one po point I wanted to touch upon uh, around security, content security and piracy. I wanted to bring it up later, but since you brought it up, um, what, what are you seeing? I mean, I know, uh, you know you're aware of the security threat landscape. Uh, what are some of the challenges you see? Uh, in protecting See, I'm content. in the new space, so for us, uh, shelf life is not too long. So content security isn't too much of a, I mean, it's not a top priority for us right now, but maybe for an uh, entertainment content company it is. Right. Probably but for, a, for a big flicks, it would be a big, uh, big for one. For us, piracy is a very important component. I mean, we see so much of content getting pirated, and especially in the movie space, uh, if the content doesn't come out quickly enough on a digital format, and I'll talk about international, right? I mean... 90% of the content is pirated, right. okay? The reason being is that by the time the, you know, if you say that there are 100 movies which are released, 95 of them will not release internationally, okay? Now you're talking about only five movies which are going to release. All of those five movies, most of them are pretty much a blockbuster, but they're the reason they've released there. So that's what the mo most of the people would want to watch. And there are so many holdbacks between the digital or satellite or others the by the time that movie hits where you want to watch it on the on some of the platform, it's about four to six months. And if you know if, if you're staying if you're outside, you want to watch the movie which is in the market now. You're not going to wait for it. Yeah. And it's not easy to go to uh, in in I'll give an example in the U.S. where I live, right? And it's not easy to just go to a theater and watch a movie because it requires a significant amount of planning for an Indian family to do that because you know most of our kids don't you know, are typically not watching Indian content. So you have to make sure that they are old enough or doing something when you're going to watch, right? So it's the, the lot of components which take has to go into fact. And then the piracy becomes such an important factor for a lot of people to do it. The, you know, one of the biggest factors in, in the U.S. and Canada and the other places is you buy a grocery for $20, you get a movie for free. And, and it's very hard to compete with something which is free. Right, all of us have known here, right? I mean, and you, somebody comes in and gives free all of us as an Indian. The first thing is, okay, let me go get that. Yep. Uh, thanks for sharing that. I, you know, we spoke about uh, expanding the audience, increasing uh, uh, audience engagement. What about regional? How is that featured? Uh, I know Big Flakes made an announcement a couple of years ago about going nine languages. Uh, how has that made an impact? So, so for us, regional is a very important fact. Uh, component and very important push for us. Obviously, Bollywood and Hindi cinema drives the, the mind share of PR and audience, but we see a lot of stickiness coming in from the regional content, especially Telugu, Tamil. We're seeing a little bit of the other Punjabi and the other content as well. And we're trying to figure out how do we correlate to that specific uh, regional content. But regional content is important uh, because when I was talking about nine, you know, only 10 movies releasing in, Indi in outside India, they, that's for in the you know for the Bollywood movies, right? When you go to the regional, the numbers are one or two. Yeah. You know, you're talking about one or two or three percent. How do people watch content? The only other way to watch content is through piracy. Right. So we have to find a way to get the content in front of the people quick. You know, you know, uh, yeah. in in a much better format. Otherwise, the piracy is always going to be there because people want to watch the content. Sure, absolutely. And uh, Abhishek on uh, MX Player, I know it's yet to launch, but uh, Obviously, so the regional uh, portfolio is quite strong. What, what is the vision from the MX player side for regional content? 
Okay, so before I answer you, Rajiv, nice plug-in for India, Australia. <laughs> See, effectively, what what all of us are trying to say is, it's very important for for everyone to have a one view of the customer, and it's very important to have to understand the entire customer journey from from the time he enters the app to the time he exits the app. Yeah, uh, which. Obviously, is aided by recommendation engines and all of that, where where you exactly know what he's looking for and what he will watch. In my view, long form content is searched for, and short form content is not searched for. It's as simple as that. Hence, the time spent on long form is more than. Yeah. Uh, coming back to what you asked me on uh, regional and uh, uh, you know going granular in terms of content offerings on any platform, I think it's very important to have everything for everyone. Yeah, that is exactly why you will see a lot of pan-Indian content available on every platform across the board. It is not, I, it, is, it, it will never be a strategy that I want to be regional focused or regionally strong offering of content. I want to be pan-India focused. Regional is a part of it. Yeah, today regional is a strategy, yes, but the larger content strategy is Pan-India, wherein I have everything for everyone. It's like a shopping mall. You come in, you shop for what you want to. If you don't find it, you leave. I don't want to give that option to my consumer. Right. Got it. Now, the, my point was more about uh, the fact that we're going deeper into Tier 2, Tier 3, and rural areas where uh, they are now beginning to access content on the mobile. And these are first-time users. Um, many of them wouldn't even have had access to television in the true sense. So how are we targeting these users and how are we, um, you know, generating revenues out of that audience? Uh, you want to talk about it from a Sony perspective? Sure. Okay. Now, let's, let's put it this way. There are possibilities. Your app the user which you're talking about will have a device capacity, okay? That device capacity will not be more than Intel RAM of more than one GB. So they, it will not be able to load a full version of your app, which would be a 30 MB to, and, and not have more than one or two apps. So what you do, need to do is you need to come up with either something called as uh, Android Insta app or cloud-based uh, cloud apps, or have a PWA version of it, uh, which we are work, working on. And those are the stuff which would give you those kind of reach gives you an app feeling, but lets you reach the customer uh, consumer at, at that specific point of time of his consumption or her consumption. Uh, the second way of doing it is that you design that app in such a manner that knowing, let's say, if you are in sports and the user has shown interest in sports, and that person can only download Sony Live Sports, hypothetically, okay, or hypothetically, just a GEC. So the person is using that as an example. It, it's on, uh, like I said, Android instant apps, and then you do this ad servings to them. So the load to his phone or devices is lower, but your capacity to reach out to him or her is also available to you. Exactly. So that's the key then, to develop apps or develop offerings specifically for this audience is the key yes. to crack it. Yeah, so that would not be a full-fledged app, but a, a beta version or uh, it's, it's a lighter version. version. Yeah, a lighter version for it which will give you the relevant uh, TG and audience for it. Got it. But how's the monetization from these regions? Have you done some analysis? What's the, as a revenue officer, what do you think is the potential of the scope so, for this? So just to give an example, currently the revenue potential to us or, or the current numbers would be 80-20. 80, 80 would be towards top 20 metros and 20% uh, would be on, on the smaller markets. So let, let's say in this case would be uh, 22 to, uh, rest of the 30 cities. Okay. Uh, by the speed or when we are ready with our lighter version of an app or PWA, we should be able to do this far effective. And we would presume this percentage to go up by 10%. But again, remember this. Any small delta increase on these kind of markets is a huge number. Right. So it, did, it need not convert back into 2080, uh, 2020, but even 10% jump is, is a massive scale number. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. So, see, it also depends on, on how big you are in these markets. Because an advertiser to come and spend on you, especially when you are on AWOT platform, you will have to give them an ROI and value for the buck spent. 
now it's very important as rajiv was saying to make a, a smaller india or a rural india strategy for your platform offering rather than taking the same offering across the board exactly because then it will not make sense either for the consumer or for an ad, ad, for the advertiser right so tailoring customization um, absolutely essential thing is it has been done already with a lot of players internationally it's just that we are not done it yeah. in india because like i said 80% revenue is still coming from we are yet to exhaust metros yeah and I, but i think that it's rapidly going to change given the you know proliferation of uh, low cost devices and low cost data plans each telecom operator competing it's happening right i mean you know if yeah. you look at the penetration of smartphone devices it's it's you know it's surpassed any imagination which anybody had 2 years ago if you look at it the growth which we have seen and the quality of the you know the quality of devices or even the network nobody had imagined everybody said that you know the data revolution or the smartphone revolution is coming but and you know if you look go back and compare the numbers we are way far ahead of that right i mean if what geo has been able to do in with the data con, data consumption patterns for even the you know when you talk about the regionals versus the metros i think they've taken the to the lowest common denominator the most of the consumption for data happens for you know people watching you know you know while they're driving a rickshaw i mean it's it's funny i mean if you go to the i mean in our office in pune if i go down there we have a big uh, big uh, rickshaw stand in front of us right most of the guys in pune don't want to go anywhere the rickshaw guys they just i feel that they just come in there and stand there and go back home right and they're playing ludo or watching a you know watching a video on that for majority of the time that's that's the whole thing they do yep. and the consumption is not only for people like us sitting here but the consumption is to the lowest common denominator right now and that is driving that factor and it's not only about when we look at the metro or the regional aspect i think we need to look at the 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 region of you know the people of who's watching what and how are we going to monetize that user because the user who's going to watch it on netflix and is going to pay that amount of money is not going to be the user who's going to watch it for free or you know in there so different set of users different strategies different content different uh, and you have to define who you're going after and what is your market yep and you brought me to the last point i wanted to discuss around monetization and revenues right so you have all this accessibility to uh, devices and data you have all the media houses uh, you know rushing in with custom content personalizing it uh, packaging it for this audience but how how are we doing on the monetization monetization aspect uh, probably touch upon news first um so, the oldest uh, business i mean news has traditionally been an advertising funded uh, product and uh, i think uh, in the last couple of years the amount of traffic uh, that has come online uh, i feel the advertisers have not caught on to it as yet i mean the bulk of uh, most of the advertising is still uh, performance driven e-commerce driven i mean your brand advertisers still need to start shifting their budgets online which is not happened now if you see uh, the total television reach would be in india would be around 800 million and digital is already 500 million plus and if you see a mature market like uh, for example uk 50% of advertising is digital yeah. in the us 40% is digital here we are i mean way behind but growing it will grow i mean uh, change in india changes have happened so fast i think most people have not really caught on to it as yet um and i i know all of you have uh, some uh, uh, you know subscription offering so any commentary on uh, what you're seeing on that india and abroad well, i mean I, i'll give an example i mean i think there are, as i was talking about a different set of users different set of users are going to pay differently right there are going to be people who will subscribe who will have a subscription pricing there are going to be ad supported models and there are going to be some free models depends on the who you you know if you're trying to acquire users and you put in a subscription of 1000 bucks a month obviously you're not going to get the users right it's very hard you're going to have a very small specific uh, strata of people who you can go after but the definition i think the different business models will reside for different set of players and different set of content so there is going to be subscription there is going to be ad supported and there is going to be a free uh, depends on what content who you targeting and where it is and and we seeing netflix has done a great job at trying to get to a subscription model right we got Please people up. to spend money and they're growing uh, even if they look at the numbers they grew quite significantly even in the us which is their top market but they you know but that that is one set but if you compare it to to what uh, you know what amazon is doing it's a bundle pricing right they are writing off their content piece completely by using the e-commerce growth 
and you know and then their players were giving it for free because it's an add on strategy or you know or an ad supported strategy or whatever so there're going to be multiple strategies available depends on what what is the end goal on that right do you have any views on uh, i mean i know you yet to launch and you probably thinking through these uh, aspects uh, no uh, subscription for us is still is still uh, a long way to go i mean uh, it's a word which which primarily is a focus right now i completely agree that the party for a word hasn't started as yet because for the simple fact that i don't a word for because for the simple reason that i don't remember a single brand which which build a brand only on digital even digital brands don't build their brands on digital only when they look for rois and cpcvs and cpms and cp cpds and cpis and all of that that is when they come to us that is a very small pie of the total advertising budget that a brand has to spend in a year till the time marketers or the agencies don't wake up to the fact that we can also de deliver value in terms of building brands we we are still a little away from that uh, from that day for mx player s word is still a little away for us sure and uh, i think rajiv uh, in terms of brands uh, seeing value i think uh, when the move from away from youtube not away but definitely a heavy shift towards the sony live app to uh, you know understand the user better to target content better but also to monetize better right you, you want to talk a little bit about that so uh, recently let's say last 6 7 months we have seen a shift the shift has been very clear we are getting brands like google not only for their pay but also apple for the phone which is worth 1 lakh rupees to advertise on us or not i'm not talking about small yeah. sovs and stuff like that i'm talking about big monies to be spent so is the case of google pixel also the difference has happened is that all they're looking at is is, a, is the environment or the content which a advertise a, a user is where i can show my ad to now obviously sony live is a brand safe environment it will not be uh, you are getting into something which you want to watch and it has been tagged to you it might not tangentially show you some of the place where the content and the product is not right or it is not country friendly or is something other than that so to avoid that people are trusting more on more on platform like ours just to give an example we were looking at numbers for last month our inventory levels are very high considering other players the reason when i say that we will be looking at 10% revenue jump on from a rural market or up country market versus others is because we know for a fact there are certain advertisers who will give me money for a up state and that money would come at certain cpm which will be far lower than what an apple would ever give me okay so brands are shifting yes we are getting campaigns which are uh, heavy digital we have been talking to a lot of uh, advertisers and brand managers who are looking at ways to shift tv money to digital end of the day it is all about uh, audience right the same it's not that some third person from alien country comes and watches yeah. sony live and tarak mehta it is usually the same set of audience. customers or, or or users which are doing that so great inventory fill a uh, lot of brands which are coming again and again i can tell you right now we would have at least 90% of brands coming back to us on monthly basis and that's a high number to be wow. spoken about yeah. uh, whereas if you look at other side of the play uh, youtube their inventory fill is at 15 to 16% and the cpms are also i'm guessing yeah it's now one third of what it was supposed to be yeah. one or two years ago there is yes logically there is device prices have gone down data charges have gone down and it is not only for one player everybody has crashed it and uses of mobile has increased penetration has increased hence the availability of inventory for a lot of players have shot off through roof we ourselves want to control it to a, to a level where we are able to justify it to the brand just showing ad to everybody which is not even a right tg so programmatic you were asking a question what happens next year so programmatic is one of the ways where advertiser are moving they are targeting content so place where would i want to show an ad on india australia and and targeting audiences so these are two things which we are doing so like i said yes we are seeing a far more uh, revenue jumps and we'll see it next year also great i think that's this year. the perfect note to end this conversation right it's uh, you know the audience size is growing uh, you know we are our uh, content creators are 
uh, creating and curating content for the expanding audience, including regional, and we're able to monetize it better uh, than we used to. But it takes some time. Sony Live obviously didn't get there overnight. It took you uh, all these years to get to a position where you can command that premium. Yes, we are, to be very fair, our market rates are expensive than others. Right. Uh, like I said, our fill rates are expensive than others. And we are also not on a lot of platforms where other people are. So Yeah, absolutely. So, so the mobile is definitely the next frontier. I mean, there's viewing online and then there's smart televisions, but mobile is definitely going to be the big one, uh, especially in India, given that it's a mobile first market and um, a mobile only market in, in many cases. So thank you, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts. I'll open up uh, the you know, question and answers for the audience, if anybody has a question for our panelists. Ladies and gentlemen, any questions from the audience? We're going to request you to please raise your hands. We'll have the mic pass on to you. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Tushar Garg. I work for Ronnie Skruwala's uh, sports and media business. Uh, my question is to Rajiv. Are you guys also Rajiv Singh? <laughs> So are you also looking at other uh, more sort of uh, mobile first sports like eSports as uh, in terms of acquiring content? So there is a discussion which is happening. Uh, I think a lot of people are talking about eSports. Okay. And we first want to fix the technology first for a uh, different... I don't, did you watch Commonwealth game? We did cover eSports and where I think India won a medal also on it. Uh, so we are looking at those kind of possibilities in future, uh, which would make a real sense to it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. That's it. Then we'll call it a wrap. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. We're going to request you to please remain on the stage. And I'd like to invite Mr. Rajiv Dal, Vice President at Sales with Share It, to please come on stage and present a token of gratitude to all of our panelists. And can we have a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? We need to uh, defeat that noise that's coming in from somewhere of the hall, I believe. I believe there's a very peculiar sound coming, which is going to take care of it. But can we have a louder round of applause so that it can defeat that noise, that irritating noise, probably? Thank you. May we request our speakers to please remain on the stage. It's time for a group photograph as well. Check. Check, one, two. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies